He knocked me over. Um, I landed on the dog bowl. This one's wife on the yacht with Prince Andrew. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This one's wife has a number of rumours that persist. For instance, it was rumoured that she glued a fellow student's eyes closed as part of a hazing incident, which resulted in a cover-up and compensation being paid. There's also the suggestion that Archie and Lilibet don't actually exist, and that the children that we have seen in the limited amount of footage and photographs that have been released actually belong to somebody's el somebody else. Or that the children do exist, but she didn't actually give birth to them, and a surrogate did, and instead this one's wife faked her pregnancies. There's also the rumour that this is her third, not second, marriage, that she was married to somebody else before Trevor Engelson, and that she actually had a child with that person, a child that she has nothing to do with. These and other rumours persist in relation to this one's wife, and of course, in some instances, it's a case that some information has been placed on the internet and people just repeat it and regurgitate it to the extent that many people end up believing it without actually going to the source of where the information came from in the first place. There's a lot of speculation about this one's wife, so-called royal experts, regularly opine on the state of the Sussex's marriage, how this one's wife is feeling, what she will be doing next, how the king regards her. And this is, of course, because media outlets know that anything that links to this one's wife draws a certain section of the public's attention, that they're likely to click on it and read, and thus that pushes advertising revenue. It's therefore in their interest, when this one's wife doesn't actually appear to be doing anything, to have people offer their views about the latest events and what might come next in order to keep the public interested in her. Furthermore, this one's wife, through her necessity of asserting control and drawing fuel, regularly has PR puff pieces pumped out. During quiet periods, this is done to keep her in the public eye, and of course she utilises that as a part of clapping back when there are threats to her control that she needs to address. There are two other rumours that actually come together in relation to this one's wife. The first is that she spent some time as what is known as a yacht girl, and the second is that she and Prince Andrew knew each other before she married Prince Harry. In relation to the yacht girl rumours, there are various pictures of her on a yacht with some other women. That, of course, of itself doesn't prove that she was engaged in the behaviour of a yacht girl, i.e. an individual that provided certain services for monetary gain to men on yachts. It may well have been that she was simply a guest of somebody else on a yacht and was photographed with some women there. They may not all have been yacht girls. In relation to Prince Andrew, of course, there was the ridiculous observation that she made when she first met him, suggesting that he thought that he was the person who held the Queen's handbag, that essentially that he was some kind of valet. This doesn't bear any actual credibility as a consequence of the fact that we know that this one's wife knew quite a lot about the royal family before marrying into it, despite her protestations to the contrary, and furthermore, it's likely, of course, that Harry will have spoken about his, aunt, his uncle Andrew, and she would have been aware of who he was. Therefore, it is rather disingenuous to suggest that when she first met him, she thought that he was the chap that held the handbag. Nevertheless, there has been repeated speculation that this one's wife was a yacht girl, that as a way of making her way through life, she basically sold her services to men on yachts in exchange for certain personal favours. 
and that she may well have known Prince Andrew before marrying into the royal family as a consequence of being said yacht girl. Naturally, should there be any actual evidence of this, this would prove rather problematic, embarrassing for Harry and scandalous for the royal family because, in effect, a prostitute would have been marrying into their ranks. No hard proof has ever emerged in relation to these allegations of her being a yacht girl and or having a liaison with Prince Andrew beforehand. Nevertheless, some information has been sent to me, which I'll leave it up to you, as always, to determine its veracity. But I'm going to share it with you. And of course, we always look at, is this something that a narcissist might well have done? Because it's fundamental never to lose sight of the fact that because we know this one's wife is a narcissist, that does enable us to understand a lot more about her behaviours, even where there might not be direct evidence. So, for example, it's invariably the case that many narcissists have a lot of intimate partners. Accordingly, we would know that about a narcissist without necessarily having evidence of those various relationships. It's more likely than not that is the case, because that is an habitual dynamic that occurs with a narcissist and their various victims. They move from partner to partner to partner, and many of the relationships tend to be short-lived. In other instances, there may be a long-suffering intimate partner primary source and lots of affairs in the background. But the fact is, particularly somatic and elite narcissists, they have a lot of intimate partners. The information that has come my way has been provided from somebody down under, good old Australia. Apparently, this one's wife had a three-day liaison with Prince Andrew on a yacht in Nice back in February 2002. Now, in case you're wondering, the picture that you see in the thumbnail is of Andrew, but that's not this one's wife, but it has been used to at least make the point of Andrew on a yacht with a brunette. Apparently, Prince Andrew was a VIP guest, and this one's wife was a yacht girl, and she decided that she would grab him before any of the other girls on the yacht could. Apparently, there was an eyewitness who was on the same yacht at the time. This person was an Australian backpacker by the name of Bob. Not his real name. Apparently, the yacht was owned by a Greek millionaire whose son, Theo, Bob had met while he was in Nice. And Theo had invited Bob to stay on the yacht for a party that was being given for a VIP, namely Prince Andrew. The eyewitness, Bob, remembers that Prince Andrew and this one's wife were both rude and arrogant. This one's wife apparently boasted, before Prince Andrew's arrival, that her father was an award-winning Hollywood lighting director and that she had just landed an acting role in a US TV hospital drama. Well, it's certainly the case that the narcissist would boast about things that they have achieved and, by virtue of character trait acquisition, boast about the achievements of somebody connected to them. This one's wife bragged about one day being the first female president of the United States. Again, her grandiosity may well have caused her to behave that way. Within half an hour of Andrew's arrival... This one's wife was sitting on his knee, with a tiny white bikini on, whispering in his ear. Shortly thereafter, they went to a cabin which was below deck, where apparently they remained for three days, having food and drinks brought to them. Later, this one's wife was overheard to say, I've got my prince at last. She was generally disliked by the other girls on the yacht, no surprise there, as a consequence of her incessant bragging. And most of her, most of them believe that she was a fantasist. 
Andrew and this one's wife left together after three days of having stayed in a cabin below deck. Bob said it was the talk of all on board. This one's wife then kept in touch with Theo, the son of the boat owner, with Theo's girlfriend, Melanie, and Bob and Theo remained friends for many years. It was through Theo that Bob learned that Andrew and this one's wife had stayed in touch until Andrew had arrived back in London. He had been some kind of envoy in Europe at the time. Apparently, the two had become rather well acquainted, and this one's wife was full of her future plans as a member of the royal family. Thus, it would appear as a consequence of this liaison between Prince Andrew and this one's wife that she thought that she was getting in there and would soon be a member of the royal family. That, of course, would be commensurate with the grasping nature of her narcissism. When Andrew arrived back in London, Bob learnt that the Queen Mother had recently died and had bequeathed her residence to Andrew. On his arrival home, this one's wife found a telephone number to Andrew's new office because his mobile was constantly turned off. And she bombarded his office with various calls. This, of course, would be the attempt to get in contact with him to assert control over him. It's hoovering. Apparently, Prince Andrew would no longer speak to her, and he instructed his staff not to put her calls through to him. A situation of narcissists collide here, and if true, he was nullifying the threat to control she posed by her incessant pestering and lack of boundary recognition by refusing the calls and instructing his staff not to put the calls through. For Prince Andrew, given his history of many intimate partners, this one's wife, if true, would simply have been an intimate partner secondary source of a shelf variety, and he'd now popped her on the shelf. Apparently, this one's wife tried for weeks to get through to Prince Andrew, because she had some important news. This information came from this one's wife, who was still talking to Melanie, the girlfriend of Theo, who passed it on to Bob. It would appear that she was pregnant, and that Prince Andrew was the father. Again, it's up to you to ascertain whether you believe that this is true. It would not be uncommon, of course, for a narcissist to fall pregnant for the purposes of ensnarement. It happens on a regular basis. Might this have been something that this one's wife had done for the purposes of attempting to ensnare Prince Andrew and gain her prince an admission to the royal family? She was unable to contact him, and therefore she opted for an abortion. She was becoming involved with a member of George Bush's Senate and hoped to rise in the party ranks. Apparently, having a child then was the last thing that she wanted if the father was going to have nothing to do with her. After the abortion, she had a brief affair with an actor, but this man had an STD and this one's wife developed a severe infection and as a consequence of that, had a hysterectomy. That was around April 2002. Bob and Theo went to university then in their respective countries and they kept in touch for a number of years, but they had followed this one's wife's progress, finding her rather a figure of ridicule, as she had not become anything that she had bragged that she would be. It would, of course, be years later that the Prince of Pink Pancakes would come along, and it was apparent that this one's wife and Prince Andrew did not have particularly good chemistry once she joined the royal family. Apparently, Eugenie was the introducer of Prince Harry to this one's wife at Soho House. The individual providing me with this information tells me that just before the 2022 Queen's Jubilee, she bumped into Bob, and as this one's wife was in the news at the time, and that both of them being originally for England, talk turned to this one's wife. It was then that Bob told this story from his backpacking youth. My contact told Bob that he should sell his story to a newspaper in relation to the liaison between this one's wife and Prince Andrew. But he wouldn't. 
Apparently, he was newly married with their first baby on the way. And whilst he was open to the idea of having his story told under anonymity, because his wife's a staunch Catholic and knows nothing of Bob's frolicking in his youth, he did agree to my contact, contacting the mail on Sunday, but not mentioning his name. The contact did and spoke to a reporter there who spoke to the editor, and they said that they would only print his story if they could use his picture in the article and details, etc., of the yacht. They offered $10,000 for the article. Bob refused. He feared that there would be a backlash against his young family, which he didn't want, and, despite being asked twice, he wouldn't go public with it. He did, however, give his blessing to tell this story as long as no way he was identified. So this is the information that this individual has passed to me as a consequence of what she has been told by Bob, the pseudonym of an Australian backpacker who apparently was on a yacht and witnessed this one's wife and Prince Andrew getting together. There, of course, are no photographs of this. There is only the indirect testimony that is provided through a third party. And therefore, as always, you need to take that into account when determining the veracity of this information. Is it the case that this information has simply come about as a consequence of the rumours that repeatedly circulate concerning this one's wife and being a yacht girl and a previous liaison with Prince Andrew and is a neat story that has been concocted to feed into those rumours or is there actual substance in this? Well, without further investigation, we can't say. But it wouldn't be a surprise, of course, to find that a narcissist such as this one's wife would be plying her trade in this fashion having no sense of guilt, no sense of shame, utilising um, her body for the purposes of earning money, and, of course, having a fixation, as we know, with the royal family and given Prince Andrew's proclivities with regard to doing a lot of shagging and liking younger women, it may well have been the case that he could have involved in a previous liaison with her. Furthermore, it certainly would be characteristic of him to ignore her thereafter, he a narcissist also, putting her on the shelf and then essentially disengaging from her. Accordingly, what has been explained to you could well occur between two narcissists, both using one another in different ways, him for the purposes of sex, which would allow him to control, draw fuel and would provide him with the residual benefit because it would feel good, her also to assert control, to draw fuel, to also obtain the residual benefit of pleasure, but also money, and furthermore, with the possibility of improving her status by ensnaring a prince. After all, this is what she eventually went and did, albeit a different one within the royal family. You can make your own mind up with regard to the veracity of this information. It's something that's entirely possible, and... It may well be the explanation behind this and what frosty relationship that has hitherto existed between this one's wife and Prince Andrew. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think that this is something that actually did occur? Do you think that it's just something that has been created to fit in with the narrative of her being a yacht girl and having a previous liaison with Prince Andrew? What do you think to the content of this information that suggests that there was a previous liaison between this one's wife and Prince Andrew on a yacht? I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.